Okay, new coding concepts, Python list this time. In the file builder, builder concept py, I create this list here, self.parts equals a new list. So down here, there it is there. Two square brackets, that indicates a Python list. The list can store multiple items. They can be changed. They can have items added and removed. They can be reordered. They can be pre-filled with items when instantiated and it's very flexible. Okay, so I'm going to use the Python interactive console this time. So I'm going to use the inbuilt terminal in Visual Studio Code. You could just open up PowerShell command or bash, whatever you wanted. Just type in Python like that and press enter. Okay, so those three arrows, that's the interactive shell now. So we can just type Python code directly as I discussed in one of the videos at the beginning of the course. But anyway, what I'm going to do is create a new list. So here I'm going to create a new list called items. So items equals square brackets like that. Now we can just print our items by typing items and it's an empty list. We could also say print items, but the default behavior in the interactive shell just calls the internal printed as a string function. Okay, so let's append two items to that list. First one, I'm gonna append a string. Okay, appending a string with single quotes in it. So that's the string, but it's got single quotes in it. So it's quite a complicated little string. Okay, another one. These aren't real words, they're fictional words that are probably good for use in examples. Let's look at items now. Items has two items in it, both strings. Okay. We can add some more items to that by using extend. Extend will add them to the end. So let's look at items again. Okay, they've been added to the end. Now note here that these first two are wrapped in inverted commas like that. That's because they contain an inner quote, whereas these ones are just wrapped in just single quotes. That's the default behavior. But since the string is a little bit more complicated, it's got a single quote in it already, it's wrapping it in double quotes like that. But they're still strings. Okay, so we can reverse. Let's reverse that list. So items dot reverse. There we go. Let's look at items now. Okay, it's reversed. We can remove one of the items. So we'll remove it by name. So items remove yaint. There we go. It doesn't exist now. Let's insert a new word. So I'm inserting at position one folk. So it should say superfluity folk wombst. Okay, let's look at that. Items. Superfluity folk wombst shouldn't have. Let's append wombst. Okay, items. Okay, so we'll look at different kinds of collections later on throughout the course. But one thing to note here about lists is that you can have duplicates. So wombst and wombst, they're duplicates. Let's count how many wombst are in there. Items count wombst. There are two wombsts in there. Okay, let's check the length of the list, looking at how many items in the list. So length of items was five. Let's change the item at position two. Now the list is zero based, so that's zero, it's one, and that's two. So it's going to change the value or the item at position two there, which is wormst. So items two now equals bag nose. Okay, items. There we go, bag nose. So that's a list. There we go. Now we can also look at individual items. What I'm going to do is look at items minus two. I'm looking at the second last item there. Okay, items minus two, shouldn't have. If I did minus one, wombst. If I did minus three, bag nose. Or I could look at items zero, which is superfluity, one. Also another one, I used lists in abstract factory. This line is in the abstract factory use case example. Abstract factory, furniture factory. There we go. If furniture in small chair, medium chair, big chair. So these square brackets here, this is a list of strings. So if furniture, which was a string when I passed it in, equals one of the items in this list, then it's true. So let's try that. We'll have a look at items again to see what's in it. Okay, so we can test if a word is in the items list so we can say folk in items and it says true folks in items false as i've done here i've used that in a conditional statement if furniture in small chair medium chair big chair then continue okay so that's really just an introduction to lists i'll use lists in almost every other code example throughout the remainder of the course there's quite a lot to go so you'll see even other ways to use lists if you're curious now what kind of methods a list can provide you can type in dir and then put the list inside that like that press enter and it will tell you here these are the inbuilt functions and then you've also got append clear copy count extend index insert pop remove reverse and sort a list you'll never stop learning lists that's a list and that i can tell you now just the surface of a list 
it will get more complicated. Excellent. In the next section, we will look at the prototype. Very good. Excellent.